Welcome to Composites Modeling Using Numerical Methods. Today we'll be covering Module 4. And what we're trying to achieve is to understand what is a free body diagram of 2D plate elements. Again, I have invited Mr. Wei, who's going to guide us through this tutorial. What are the learning objectives of this particular module? We want to gain a fundamental understanding of the internal forces bending moment and shear forces acting in 2D plates. We also want to conduct several hand calculation problems to learn the physical meaning of these internal forces, moments, and shears. We'll then use the same examples to show how the software calculations can be done for these particular examples. Let's look at a 2D plate representation. What, what does that mean? So first, let's examine a 3D structural representation, represent, representation of a plate. This has coordinates x, y, and z, and it's a three-dimensional structure. But when you have structures that are thin in one direction, but long in the other two directions, you can represent this as a plate. For example, a fuselage is very thin in the thickness direction compared to the radius and the length. And so as a consequence, you can represent that as a plate. Not a flat plate, it could be curved, for example. How do we, how do we achieve that? A 2D structure representation is utilized as an idealization and simplification of a 3D structure by tracking the mid surface. And by doing so, we're able to then simplify the problem by tracking the deflections at the mid surface. This representation comes in two flavors. For thin structures, the theory is called classical plate theory, and for thick structures, it's called first order shear deformation theory. In today's lecture, we're going to be focusing on thin structures, and my goal is to explain to you what are the free body diagram forces that are acting on plates where we track the mid surface. Below in the description, I provide a link to the full tutorial and lecture on composites plate theory, which is essential backbone to this particular module. Let's discover then the eight different free body elements that we need to learn about for a plate. There are three, me two membrane forces. The, the NXX is acting in the local one direction and I'll describe each of those in with pictures. NYY is a membrane force per unit width in the local direction, two direction. And then NXY is also a membrane force and it's also per unit width and it's acting in the one, two plane. Then we have two transverse shear forces, QX and QY, and they act in the local one direction in the transverse direction. Uh, so it's really acting in the three direction through a thickness but is in the one phase, and the QY load acts transverse to the plate in in the through a thickness direction in the in the Z direction, but it's acting in two phase, and I'll show that. And then we have three bending moments. The bending moments is per unit width about the local two axis. NYY is a bending force width per unit width about the one axis. And then you have MXY, which is a twisting moment per unit width in the local 1, 2 plane. The formulas for basin plate theory, what they do, they provide you eight forces, eight quantities that represent the free body diagram of a plate. And that is equal to minus H half to H half if the thickness of the plate is H and the mid surface is, is located at z equals zero, then this integral goes minus h half to h half, 
And notice how this integral is only through thickness dz. And that is because what we're doing is we're eliminating the z direction so that we can just track the mid surface. Therefore, by doing this, we accomplish that. And now each of these quantities are integrated in that manner. Nxx is the integral be, be, from minus h half to h half, sigma xx dz. Ay is an integral from minus h half to h half, sigma yy dz, and so forth. Again, I really recommend that you go through lecture number four, uh, module four, uh, which is Describe the link is provided in the video description. So let's examine the in plane plate forces. One of the things I want you to notice is that the in plane plate forces are force per unit length. That's very important because the units are it's not force, the unit is force per unit length. And here, what I'm showing is the NXX direction the forces of the nxx direction, you can see it's a line load and it's also per unit width. And the reason is because we integrated that quantity sigma xx through the thickness Z, dz. And so what the results is a line load that goes from y equals zero to some length y equals b, for example, the width of this plate. And nxx is applied, is acting along the x direction. And yy, on the other hand, has a sigma yy dz integrated from minus h half to h half. And, and nyy is acting per unit width also along this edge that's parallel to the x-axis. And nyy is acting in the y direction. And this is also per unit width. You then have nxy, which is the in-plane shear forces in this membrane. What we're looking at there is the forces acting in this mid surface. And this quantity right here, NXY, is acting to distort this plate while NXX and YY act to stretch or compress the, the, the plate. One thing to realize is that these three quantities are the reaction forces for a plate. For example, if you apply external loads to a structure, that can be represented as a plate. And these three quantities represent the internal forces that arise from the external forces, internal to the structure. Now let's examine these last two here, Qx, Qy, which are integrals from minus h half to h half, sigma xz, sigma yz, dz. And what Qx is, is a load acting transverse to the plate in the z direction. And it's also per unit width. This quantity Qx is a resultant force from integrating the transfer shear stress sigma xz through a thickness. Qy is a transfer shear stress shear load also per unit width and is acting in the z direction in the y phase. We then have bending moments, which have units of force. And the reason is because the bending moment here is per unit width. So let's look at mxx. mxx is the integral from an s h half to h half, sigma xx, z, dc. When I look at that, I realize that mxx is acting along the width like that, per unit length. And the the bending MXX is about the Y axis. Well, for, for NYY, that bending is about the X axis. And this bending on the, mo the bending moment here has units of force because it's per unit width. If we now look at the last quantity, mxy, that's the integral of minus, minus h half to h half, sigma xy, z, dz. That's a moment that's acting along this edge that's acting to twist this plate. 
And you can see here is rotating about the X axis on this edge. While on this axis, along this edge, you have a rotation too, and the rotation is about the Y axis. The bending is gonna cause this blade to twist. In abacus, abacus can provide a free body diagram output. And in abacus, NXX is referred as a section force SF1. NYY is referred to as the section force 2. And NXY is section force 3. MXX is referred to as the bending, bending moment force per unit width, SM1. NYY is the bending moment force per unit width, SM2. And then MXY is the twisting moment, SM3. The outputs as well, QX and QY, are referred to correspondingly as the section force SF4 and SF5. So these are the outputs that Abacus can provide to you for a plate so you can better understand how the internal force distribution is used. You can use this quantities letter to then optimize a structure. So now let's look at an example. So you can see how this works for a very simplistic example, right? In real application, you'll see a more complex problem. But for now, this is meant to explain the process. So say that on this edge here, I apply a total force of 300 pound force. We then seek to understand what is the stress sigma xx? Recall that nxx is the integral of minus h half to h half sigma xx dz. So sigma xx is going to be 300 pound force divided by the length 3 inches divided by h to get you force divided by area. So then I have 300 divided by 3 times h, and that gives me sigma xx. Now, for nyy, you can see here that the force that's been applied, the total force applied on the edge is 600 pounds. So sigma yy is going to be 600 pounds divided by the cross-sectional area. In this case, it's 4 times h. So I have written that there for sigma yy. In NXY, you can see there's no shear force applied, so that is zero. And now when I integrate from minus h half to h half, you notice here how these 300 cancels with 3, you get 100. But the integral of minus h half to h half dz is h. So therefore, h, h, h cancel to get 100 pound force per inch. Notice this pound force per inch for NXX. Because like I said before, NXX is a force per unit width. Then I have NYY, and I can do the same thing. 600 divided by 4 is 150. The H cancels because the minus integral from minus H half to H half dz is H. H cancels with H, and I get 150. Notice how these quantities then did not depend on H. NXY is 0, so that is 0, and the other quantities were not we did not discuss them here. There's no moments applied or anything. I can arrive to the same result by looking at a different way of looking at it. So there's a 300 pound applied to this edge. So that line load intensity along this edge should be 300 divided by three. You can see I did the calculation here to get 100. And on this edge, if I apply 600 pounds along this edge, the line load should be 600 divided by four which is 150 pound per inch. Both methods yield the same result because it's a very simple problem. And notice how the in-plane membrane force turns out to be a force per unit width. And that's why it has units of pound force per inch. Now let's examine example number two, where I have a pressure applied to the structure and I will use X as the axial direction and y as a hook direction. The thickness of the plate is h. And now what I notice here is that sigma xx 
must be PR, pressure times the radius, divided by twice the thickness. That is a formula for the stress in the axial direction. In the hook direction, the stress is twice the axial direction, so I have PR divided by H, and the NXY is zero. So when I do this integral, if I assume that the stress is the centroid thickness, then in this case, the H cancels with H, and I get PR over two, and then NYY is PR. Note how these two quantities do not depend on H. Example three. It's the same example, but now I'm going to apply a torsional load. In this example, the shear stress for thin wall structure is a torque applied divided by twice the area enclosed by the circle, that is the formula, times H, the thickness of the cylinder. That's a formula for thin wall structure. So I've plugged in sigma xy here. These two are the same because it's the same example as example two. All I have done is add a torsion load. Here you can see how H also, can, also cancels out again to get your torque divided by 2A. Example four. I apply an 80 pound load on this edge and I want to examine what internal forces will be for this problem. Well, if I apply 80 pounds transverse, that's basically applying a load QY. Um, and I'll say that's a negative sign here because I'm applying a load. Let's put that sign there. I'm applying a load downwards. You can see here, and F is 80. So 80 divided by this width <clears throat> 80 divided by this width is what you see here for QY. But this force also causes a, mo causes a moment. If I want to know the moment about the AA distance here, that that moment is going to be force, which is 80, times this distance 10, right? So it's 80 times 10, that's 800. But the moment is per unit width in plate theory, so is going to be 800 divided by this width, and that's why you see 80 times 10 divided by 2, which is the width. So again, these quantities are per unit width, and you can see how I converted it in that way. So what we're going to do in this particular tutorial, what I want to do here is I'd like us to model each of these examples. Example 1, a plate like this, Example two, a pressure vessel like this. Example three, a pressure vessel with torsion. Example four, a plate like this. And what we wanna do is to model each of these cases to show what the outputs will be by abacus. And we're gonna use a stacking sequence like this with a cured ply thickness of 0.09. And then I have a material name as shown here with these properties provided here. E11 is a modulus along the fiber direction, 19 MSI. E22 is 1.3 MSI transverse to the fibers. E33 is in the thickness direction, 500,000 PSI. And they have the three Poisson ratios. Nu12 is 0.3, Nu13 is 0.4, and Nu23 is 0.4. Then I have G12 and G13 and G23 provided. What we want to do is plot NXX, NYY, NXY, QX, QY, MXX, NYY, MXY, these eight internal forces that react to external forces for each of these examples. And so with that, I'll pass it over to Mr. Wei who is going to guide us to this great tutorial. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Wei, for your help here. Hi, everyone. Um, this time, I will use Abacus to request the force of any moment uh, in our 2D plates. Uh, we will use the shell element and the round four cases to request uh, the force in uh, 
like a x and a y direction, the shear force, and also the moment by moment, um, the transverse shear force. The material property is shown in the last slide. We will use this composite material, uh, which have a uh, uh, total 22 layers, but it's a symmetric, so we can just build 11 uh, layers. And this is their material orientation, um, the composite uh, like a fiber orientation. Okay, let's start. The first case is, uh, is the, this uh, uh, plate, the shield under the back shield tension. Okay, we open up because we first create the part, use the shield planner. Then uh, the size is uh, in x direction is four, y direction is three. So that is three. Then we'll create the material properties. Uh, we just make a side, side so that I can input the right. Okay. Yeah, we use the engineer engineering constant. Um, but you can also use this uh, lambda. Okay. Uh, then let's back here. Then uh, we want to assign the composite material. So um, click this, create. Uh, Now here we just need to create 11 uh, layers because we can click this up. Then the region is this region. Material we have will create is the same material. Thickness is the unit, all the linear. The thickness of the layers is constant, 0.09. Rotation will just include so what that will be. <coughs> Okay, then it's based on X ray Z direction. Oh, okay, oh, it's right. Then click on. Then assemble it. We just use the, the simple static analysis. Then we need to one more step uh, for the field for the field output. Can I create one? Okay, sorry, I didn't create one. So continue. Uh, I need to change my resolution. It's out of screen. Uh, I use the larger, uh, the smaller resolution just for, for you guys can see my process clearly. So now we create it, the initial one, then it will come here, then we just use the normal one, okay. Then here, so for the field output, Except this, uh, actually what we want is this section force and moment. Click this on. Okay. Stop. 
Then go to the interaction. Um, because this composite material, we can create the two sides. So later we can uh, give the uh, we can uh, apply the both either. So reference one here, reply another reference there. Okay, then create the two sides. Mm -hmm. And later we want to make this reference one to connect this surface one. So we need to create this surface set. Surface two set. Yeah, okay. Then we create a constraint. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one is and then the surface one to the reference point one. Then that will be in one direction. And the second one is uh, surface two and the reference uh, two in the direction, uh, y direction. Okay. Then let's make a boundary condition. Uh, we can set a boundary condition, symmetric boundary condition at the left side to make the X metric not move in X direction. And then another one is the bottom one to make it uh, not uh, move in the Y direction. Okay, then we apply the force. So the force uh, in Y direction, that it will, will be the 600, X direction 300. So we apply the concentrated force. Here, this is uh, uh, so this one is uh, uh, in X direction, 300. Yes, then other zero, and then create another concentrated force, this one in y direction would be 600. Then we we'll just mesh it. Uh, we use the structure one and the element size, we can make it uh, kind of small, like 0.5. Then we we'll just mesh, uh, maybe to cross. We will check this chain and we don't want to reduce one. Okay, good. And drop. Uh, uh, then we can uh, go to the job. Then we create one. Example one. Action. Then we create one. should be quite. <clears throat> Then for the results, we just need to request SF. So uh, that will be the, oh, I forget one thing. Okay, uh, my material property didn't include the right, it's zero, I forget to change it. Now we can rerun the job. This is, uh, So, um, the extraction is 100, uh, in y direction is 150, so that is the same as the head calculation. Okay, now next we are going to uh, calculate the example 2. Uh, then for example 2 is the 
cylindrical than under the, the uh, under the internal pressure. Uh, I can just copy the model, so I don't need to re-input the material properties. Okay, so for the example two, uh, the part, so we don't need it, we just do it. The greater part, uh, this time we are using the extrusion. Okay, then I just create a circle uh, that's done, uh, the radius is 10. Then the uh, diffs we just set as uh, maybe also 10. Okay. Now we go to the property. We already have oh no, we don't have we have the already have the material part. Now we just assign a new material. Oh here uh we need to be very careful because it's surgical, so we want to change the uh, layer orientation. We cannot use part global. Um we need to use the um discrete. So we choose the normal axis, which is uh, the surface normal to uh, the vector normal to this surface. So it pops out the angle like this, and then it gave us uh, it lets us choose primary axis, which means the direction one. So we can choose the edge here. Okay, so that will be like long edge. Then, then we just continue. Now we build out this. So the remaining things is the same material we use to build thickness for the other one, right? Rotation angle. Mm. Uh zero for the five. Okay, for the five. And uh, double check. So rotation is uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's the rotation is correct. So we want the x y plane. It's on the surface. So you can see this is a tangent to the like uh, the surface. The in the one, the one and the two direction. So that's how we create this uh, orientation. Okay, that's done. Then we go to assemble. Um, we already have this. Then we go to the step. Uh, the step, we still use the static one and the request uh, uh, SF, the section force and moment. The interaction for this one, we don't need that. We just directly go to the load. Okay, for the load. Mm. Then we have, we just uh, deactivate the PRV setting with the new one, so that's clear. Um, for the this boundary, we can set uh, displacement, uh, Shoot. This one. So because I, I want to simulate the case two and the case three together, the difference is just that the case three have a additional torsion, the torque force. Uh, so for uh this uh, for these two cases, I can make like a display control. Don't let it move in the z direction and also fix all the rotation. Rotational direction, break us down. Then for the load, load, we want the internal pressure. Um, so choose the purple one, the inside. Then we want to okay, the the things is all it's out of screen, so I need to. Move this a little bit. Okay. Now we can create the pressure. Choose the purple one. 
And the magnitude on uh, we can make it as one. Just for coming, then this is our internal fraction. But then because uh, uh in this case we have the uh longitudinal stress because it is assumed it is sealed. So there is the force uh, internal stress in the x-axis direction, the actual direction. Then we need to add the longitudinal force. That is the shield load. Then we add it here. Oh, it's also out of the, we move here. Okay. Uh, great. Shield at load. The this one mm, because the mm, R is radius is ten, then the pressure is one. So in the extra direction, the load will be P R over two. So that will be five. And uh, this is and the force is like a uh, out of uh is in the z direction, so that will be negative five. And then we want to add the the torsion. The torsion is still shear one. Then traction height we choose shear. Then for the uh torsion we just uh, input two. That uh, later we can check the results. Okay, that's done. Then we go to the mesh. Hmm, I did Uh, Oh, it's two dense. Okay, nice. I don't need the reduced one. Okay, okay. Okay, that's done. Then we can create a job. Hmm. So that it will be for example three and a uh, two and a three. Uh, oh, we need to delete something. But previously, we have the interaction or con uh, connection. So for now, I just uh, uh, deactivate. Okay, we can see the results. So for SF1, um, so this, uh, to look at the results, we need to be a little bit careful because we, we have set up the, our orientation. Z direction is our three direction and the X direction actually is our hoop direction, the primary axis. And uh, then Y direction is our, uh, Axis. So for the um, SF1, that means uh, this uh, uh, hook direction, then we can check the value, like here, then prop it. Uh, uh, we choose the node, and then we can say, okay, the value is around the 10 which is very close to our hands calculation, which P R, that is our P is one, pressure one, R radius is uh, uh, the uh, 10. So the value is 10. Remember our X direction is a hoop direction. That's how we define the material orientation. Then SF2, that will be five and half of the, that is the X axis, the longitudinal direction, um, that will be half of the hoop, uh, hoop load, that's correct. And then we check our shear. 
then shear is uh, to around two that we set, uh, like uh, we set previously. So all is all the uh, results are uh, same as the hand calculation. Okay. Then now we go to the last uh, part, the bending problem. Um, okay. Then for the bending, actually we can still copy the example one. Just save some time. Uh, uh, the example four actually. Uh, uh, we need to change a little bit of the size. We go to the um, section uh, sketch and we make uh, x direction is two. Then y direction is 20. Okay. Uh, for this one, I want to create another material project that is uh, as a tropic linear elastic material that uh, we want to compare with the results later. So we'll just randomly input the modulus because we require the force. So actually, uh, the reaction force. So actually, this doesn't matter. Here, homogeneously. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, this uh, this section setting, I just uh, hmm, uh, just for later uh, later as a topic uh, material check. So first, we still uh, simulate the composite material. Assemble and uh, in this one we interaction. We can close this one. Uh, this one. Oh, we close this one. We want this one. Then the third. One. So we want. So we apply the um concentrated force at uh, this edge and then uh in Z direction. So we want in this edge to move together in Z direction. So now we change the graph freedom three. Uh, then load. For the load, we can deactivate uh, this. This one we climb it. So that will be simple catalytic B. Then the load. The load is in third direction. Mm, how much is it? Eight. Eighty. Uh, we'll make it down. Okay. Look like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we. Uh, we can add a uh, symmetric boundary at the two sides uh, to make sure that the uh, this bay is the pure bending. We just don't let this two boundary move in the uh, x direction. Then the mesh. Structure okay, nothing much. So two cross, going mm, two. Okay, maybe make it one four. Okay, okay. Then we can start reading the jobs. Mm -hmm.
Oh, I think it's the degree of freedom. Um, I said okay because I used to copy the model. Um, actually, I need to uh reset the reference setting and the edge. So we just simply deactivate uh, this uh, constraint. We apply the edge load, then we create a load. Choose the shear edge load, and then uh for the traction we use the transverse and apply um the other end uh the magnitude is the uh the total force divided by the width so it's 40 the 80 divided by two then we can run the job uh Okay, let me double check uh, what do they want. So they want to check the uh, the bending moment and the, the shear force. So they want to SM the section moment at the middle, uh, the middle point, where is the middle point? So they're right here. Uh, This one is three. This one is fifty. Uh, okay, it's this point. Then we can request the value here. So that is the bending moment is around the four hundred. Um, that's uh, that is exactly the hands calculation 800 divided by 2, and then we request the shear. Shear will be like uh, SF5. So, this is very tricky because of the composite material. So, we need to choose the middle that was around the 40, the force is around 40. So, we double check the results the 80 divided by 2 is 40. And the two sides, because the composite material somehow is deviated, uh, uh, like what I can do later. But if you use the extract material, that will be more clear. Um, like uh, if you we just deactivate the material uh, assignment, we create new material assignments uh, using our uh, extract linear elastic material. Then we create another job, example four. Uh, linear elastic material. Okay, that's finished. Okay, the results. Mm, it's the as for uh, let me first find the results. Middle point is where? Seven. Oh, this point. Okay. Uh, then we request first request the uh, um uh, the uh bending moment. You can see it's four four hundred uh four hundred. Uh, 400. So that is exactly it for the hand calculation. Then we check the shear section force. So that will be exactly 40. And that is all the same for the whole material. The same as what you can do here. Okay. That's all how you can request uh, this uh, uh, force and the uh, moment in the course. Thanks for watching.